Hello everybody, welcome back to Frontier Patriot and well hello there Mish Mish. Wow, talk about good timing. <laughs> I know, he almost missed the start of the show. Hey Mish Mish, you were almost late. America. Everyone was missing you. Hi America. I missed you guys <clears throat> too. We didn't have a chew chat last week because Ron was sick and we missed you so so much. I'm really glad that we're back with you guys. Yes, and <laughs> thank you everybody that watched the little woodworking video that we put out uh, last Friday. Uh, that was kind of the hold you over until this chew chat and a lot of you commented said that you missed the chew chat and you know that was good to know because we know you guys like them now. And we <laughs> missed you too so what a coincidence and here we are today with a full balanced diet of chocolate. of chocolate, chocolate and chocolate. Oh yeah and there's some oatmeal in there too. <laughs> oh man we're gonna have some upset stomachs at the end of this video but it is gonna be worth it. <laughs> so chocolate? From the early 1800s. Yeah. People say, well, they didn't have chocolate back then. Yeah, they, they didn't have chocolate back yeah, then. There ain't no way. There they didn't have no bowls way. back then. They, they didn't have... have spoons back then. They didn't have cuts back well, then. Well, guess what? Chocolate's been around since the beginning of time. Uh, the Aztecs and the, uh, what's the other ones down there? The uh, In Inca? In the Incas. Okay. And, the, and the Mayans and all of them down there in Central America, Central South America. Central and South America. Yes, the natives way, way, way back. Wow. <laughs> they had chocolate and they were drinking it. Now it wasn't sweetened like today, but it was more bitter and it had the hot chili peppers in it because they like their chili peppers down yes. there. Yes. So that made me think of something. That means chocolate is native to the Americas. That's right. Actually, a lot of foods that I feel like people just take for granted to be a part of their modern day culture are not actually native to their lands. So for example, can you imagine Italian food without tomatoes? No, not really. <laughs> Tomatoes are native to the Americas. They had to be brought over to Europe from the Americas at a certain point. Chili peppers. Can you imagine Korean food or no, any Asian no. food really without chili peppers? Chili peppers are native to the Americas. They had to be introduced to those countries. Well, in 1519, the Spanish conquistadors came mm -hmm. to uh, Central America and they went back to Spain with a whole bunch of chocolate. And they used, chocolate. they tried it as a med like a medicinal. Yes, at because first, it kind of perks you up. You know, it's got right. caffeine in it, a yep. little bit of sugar. And, and that's then, also how the Aztecs and the Mayans originally consumed it. They right. consumed it as medicine. And so they tried it as medicine in Spain, and then they um, they found out that it was kind of an aphrodisiac because it makes you feel funny. You're, it's caffeinated. Yeah, there and, is actually caffeine in chocolate. And then finally somebody had the bright idea in 1644 to sweeten it up. And I have here the recipe. This is the first... European recipe for hot chocolate, and it's from 1644. 1644! That's how old hot chocolate that's, goes back to. That's almost Europe. 200 years before our time period here right. in 1823. 400-something oh, years ago. Yeah, we're, we're not so much old farts anymore, are we? They're old farts. You know what? I They're think, ancient. I think we could live back then, because we have established that they do have chocolate, so I think we'd be fine. <laughs> so what's the recipe? Okay, so this seems like it makes a big batch, but maybe not. I'll let you guys decide on that. How big is <laughs> do you know how big a cocoa bean is? Uh, I know that raw they're pretty big. They're Are maybe, you serious? Yeah, raw like as they grow on the tree, I think they're pretty big. So like the size of an egg. No, they're big. bigger than that. Are you serious? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, so this makes a huge quantity. Anyways, back to the recipe for 1644 Spanish hot chocolate, mm -hmm. the first hot chocolate recipe in Europe. 100 cocoa beans two chilies, a handful of anise, one ear flour, two ounces of cinnamon, one vanilla pod, and then add a needle to paste, and one pound of sugar, and a dozen almonds and or hazelnuts. Wow. Now, <laughs> after you told me how big those pods are, right. it seems like they should be adding a lot more cinnamon to me and more right. sugar and more chilies. Well, I do have to admit, that's all I know. I know the outside part is this big. I don't know if inside oh, of it there are little tiny pieces that can be dried out. Anyone out there, do you know how big a cocoa bean is? I, don't know, I wish we had one here. The bean. <laughs> it's Missouri. We don't got no cocoa beans out here. <laughs> they don't grow here. We're not tropical Yeah, enough. But you know what? You just presented an excellent point. Is chocolate today comparable to chocolate as it was 400 years ago or 200 years ago or even 100 years ago. So modern chocolate, you go to the store, you pick up some Dove chocolate. 
Mmm, that's some good stuff. I love it too. I like the dark one. But what's in there? Besides palm oil for, I really hope not. But they put sugar in it. They put milk in it. Evaporated milk. Evaporated corn milk. Syrup. Oh gosh, I hope Maybe not. Maybe corn syrup, but some chocolates mm -hmm. do have it. Vanilla extract, yeah. and that's usually it. Maybe some gum and number four brown color. Oh, I know. I hope not. <laughs> but back then, they would have put cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, mm -hmm. almonds were very commonly added to chocolate as well. And then you also would have added the sugar and the milk and the vanilla and whatnot that right. we associate with it today. So you cannot just go to a store and pick up any old bar of chocolate and try to recreate a 200 year old chocolate recipe. It will not taste the same. You have to add all these spices to it, almonds and all sorts of fun things. Now we used a certain chocolate for this recipe. Yeah, we did. Right? We use American Heritage brand. It's actually an 18th century recipe and you can still buy it today. They have a website. You can get the little tiny bars like we did. They also sell the powdered form of it. You can add it to baking goods. Candy at Sassafras Creek Original, she sells it. She will not ship that though. You have to come to her store and she sells each little bar for 50 cents. Yeah, it's really good. I love it. I get one every time I'm there. Right. It's certainly different. It's very, very good, but you might not be expecting chocolate that has a little bit of a spicy taste to it. Um, he's eating the chocolate. He's mish, gonna, mish. He's gonna be pooping everywhere. Cats cannot eat chocolate. They're like dogs. They can't eat it. No, he wasn't eating it. Oh, he licked it. He's gonna poop uh, later. I know it. Mish, mish. And I was gonna eat some of that later too. Mish, mish. Well, maybe he didn't lick his butt. Maybe it's still safe to eat. Okay, I'm hanging this up here. Okay. He cannot reach up here. Come here, buddy. And now he's taking my seat. Come here. Come sit with Ryan. Mish, mish. Urgh, you're getting too fat. You need to lay off the sweets. So we have three things here today that are chocolatey, and all three of these things are breakfast dishes from the Female Economist. I'm using the 1810 edition of it. Chocolate for breakfast? You know, it might sound ridiculous, but I do remember growing up they had um, chocolatey cereals. Yep which are so bad for you, but kids love them, right? I think they still do. Well, we've said it on the show before. That was George Washington's favorite breakfast drink. Yes. Thick hot chocolate. Yes, and it wasn't just George's favorite breakfast drink. Chocolate was actually considered a very standard breakfast food yeah. in the mid to late 18th century and the early 1900s. It was standard. I mean, there was coffee houses, Coffee. There were tea houses, and then there were chocolate houses. Right, and there was even uh, chocolate coffee and mm -hmm. chocolate tea and chocolate wine and liqueur back then. Right. There was a whole chocolate craze. Yeah, people were obsessed with chocolate, and it wasn't that all hard to get because back then they had ways of shipping the just straight up cocoa beans. They would ship them all around the world. There were very well established trade routes by this time period. And so there are recipes in these books that tell you how to make chocolate at home. Mm -hmm. You would have to hand grind it to right. turn it into that the chocolatey goodness. I guess the friction makes it kind of melt. It might, yeah. But I, I do mm. have some notes here um, mm. from George Washington. Uh, he would order chocolate annually, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 pounds of it. 50 pounds, 50 pounds. of Actually, chocolate. The, uh, the, the notes that I did see for 50 pounds was the last year that he was alive in 1799. He ordered 50 pounds of cocoa in 1799. That's a lot of chocolate, man. <laughs> that is a lot of chocolate. I mean, I'm not exaggerating when I say I really think people back then were more obsessed with chocolate than we are today. And that's saying be. a lot because people are obsessed with chocolate today. But they were crazy obsessed with chocolate back then. Well, hey, I want to drink some of this. I'm, I'm thirsty and I want to try okay. some of this chocolate. Okay, so Turn me up. we will start out with the first receipt, which was for a hot chocolate breakfast drink. And I already have some in my cup here, so let me just serve up Ron. I'm thirsty. Ish. <laughs> well, this will quench your thirst. And it looks good, thick and creamy. Yeah, it looks like uh, either chocolate milk or hot cocoa. Ooh, woo! It could have gotten a lot thicker than this, but I fortunately found a recipe that wasn't too crazy. That's that's still mm. like two or three times thicker than your mm. standard hot chocolate that we know today. Okay. That that's good. Mm-hmm. That's smooth. That's very very good. 
Very, very good. Oh my gosh. I know, this is, okay, Ron, one out of 10. What would you rate this breakfast drink? Oh, I heard that goal. This is a 20 out of 10. This is a 20 out of 10. Please make this one at home. This is very good and not all that hard to make. That's dangerous. I'm gonna have a bellyache after today's show. Uh, my fiance, Ron, I should say this I... after he's already drunk this, is lactose intolerant. And this has milk in it. So here we go, guys. It's gonna be a long night, but you know what? This tastes oh good. Oh my gosh. I don't blame you. It's hey, so worth it. Try it when you close your eyes and put your head back. It's so much better. Oh. That's really good. All right, I'm almost out. Do they still have chocolate houses today? Oh, man. I gotta get me some more of that. Okay. I don't, I have never seen a chocolate house. I've never either. It, it melt. You can't build a house out of chocolate. See, that's why I'm telling you, I think people back then were more obsessed <laughs> with chocolate than they are today because Look at that. you would have had the coffee houses. Now that survived. There's coffee houses everywhere. But a chocolate house, a place you could go just to drink this, just to drink hot chocolate. They don't have those anymore. Excuse me. I think you just put all what's left in there. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's only half a cup, unfortunately. Uh, I will save this, because that's so good. But it might get cold. You know, it's okay. Okay. I like cold it hot, I don't like it cold. Yeah. Oh man, very, that's so very delicious. Good. And I'm not faking it, that's good. This is <sighs> very good. You said 20 out of 10. That's 20 out of 10. 200 out of 10, baby. This is 200, two, 200 out, of out of 10. Add another zero to the 201 end. 201 out of 10, then. 201 out of 10. I feel like we're bidding at an auction. 500 <laughs> hey, out of 10. <laughs> 600 out of 10. Hey. 599. Okay. <laughs> you guys get it. We love it. You this is so it. good. And I did translate this into a modern recipe. All of the recipes are not on Frontier Patriot. This is our companion channel to our main channel, Early American. That's where we cook everything. That's where the recipes are at. And over here, we eat everything. That's right. So go over to Early American, the chocolate video, the companion video for this, top pin comment. I have translated the recipe or the receipt, as they called it back then, for this incredible drink that adults and kids are gonna love. Oh my yes. gosh. And also, we made that little doohickey thing there. Oh yes, so, we did make this doohickey. And let me back up a little bit. Justine has a brand new membership on Early American. If you want to see behind the scenes video clips and pictures, please join the membership over there. Free. And you can see how we spent our last weekend. We went to a little rendezvous get together. Um, Antique mall. Yeah, and on my channel, where I show how you mm -hmm. or show how we made this. We made this for the video because we did not have one yes. and you can't buy one. So yes. we looked at old paintings and we yeah. made one. Yep, so Ron and I, our channels, this channel is Ron's channel. Yes. He mans this one, Frontier Patriot, that's Ron's doing. <sighs> Early American, that's Justine's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but on his membership, on his channel, he just released a video of him making one of these. Either that or he's about to release it. At the end of this week. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to join, we really appreciate yeah. all the money for that goes to our homestead building project, right. which is going to be our next film location. We're building an 1820 style house, not just a little garden shed like this, you know. I mean, we're actually hey. building a house house. <laughs> We'll be hating on oh, oh, this cabin. Oh, it's fine. I like it here. I'm just kidding. We worked hard on this. <laughs> yes, we did. And we work hard in it. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and we eat hard in it. All right, well, let, let's do some eating here. And this is called a chocolate mill. Yes, it froths the milk. Right, you're supposed to do like so, not like a butter churn. Right. You have to do like so, and it froths up and it blends up the chocolate really, really well. Oh, that don't sound. That's the sound you're gonna be hearing later, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, I'm like, so tell us the difference between these two here. So the thing is, I could not figure this one out. And because of that, I had to make both of them. You know, better safe than sorry. And so I couldn't figure out, was it asking me to make the chocolate oatmeal with our really thick chocolate gravy that's hanging over there that Mish, Mish took a lick of earlier? Or was it saying to mix up this, the hot chocolate that we're drinking with the chocolate oatmeal? Right. I couldn't figure it out. It's so painfully vague, like a lot of receipts are in this time period. Let me read it, 
You guys tell me which one do you think is the correct one. This is from the thick chocolate gravy, and this one is the final product, which is the hot chocolate. The first receipt, which is simply titled chocolate. Cut a cake of chocolate in very small bits. Put a pint of water into the pot, and when it boils, put in the chocolate, mill it off the fire until melted. Boil it on a gentle fire, pour it into a basin, and it will keep in a cool place eight or 10 days. When wanted, put a spoonful or two into some milk, boil it with sugar, and mill it well. And now here is the second recipe, which I found directly below the previous one. It's simply titled another, so another way to make it. Make it as directed in the last receipt. Make some gruel as thick as the chocolate, strain it, and use an equal amount of gruel and chocolate. This is better for a weak stomach than the chocolate alone. The gruel should be made of fine Yorkshire oatmeal and well boiled. So, oh, so this one has the just the regular old chocolate, the like you said. Thick gravy. And that one's there. got the the hot cocoa. And this drink one in has it. that hot chocolate drink that we're drinking now. It well, it just says in the receipt to add what was previously made in the previous receipt. Well, it doesn't say should I do this or should I do that? Because there was two things technically yeah. prepared. Yeah, there were two things technically prepared. Now, what happened is first I made this, and then I looked at it, and there was a clue. It said that this dish is better for sensitive stomachs than this dish. So I feel like, does this seem like the kind of dish that would be good for people with sensitive stomachs? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Whereas this is a lot more diluted. The chocolate is a lot less in here than it certainly is in here. I mean, this has actually gotten kind of stiff now. Yeah, it's setting up. Yeah, because there's so much chocolate in there. Whereas this is still a nice soft gruel. So you know what? Just to be safe, I made both and we're going to try them. Okay. See which one tastes better. Well, let me give you a little dab of this. Okay. First we'll try this one. That's not a little dab. That's a big old dab. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I gotta admit, about a year ago, I was making oatmeal for breakfast and I was like, I'll put some chocolate chips in here, I'll see what it's like. And it was good. And I thought I was the only person in the world that ever did that. And no. apparently not. <laughs> not only are you not the only person, <laughs> you were off by about 200 years. I know. <laughs> They had chocolate oatmeal 200 something years ago. All right, okay, should we uh... Yeah, we should. Ding it. Oh. Blank. Blank. <laughs> there we go. That's like eating plain chocolate. It tastes good. Eh, I don't like it. It's just too much. It's too rich it for rich. me. It's really, really rich. And that the oatmeal receipt said to add the same quantity of chocolate as oatmeal. So, Lord, if you don't like the flavor of chocolate, you need to stay away from following this recipe to a T because the same <laughs> quantity of chocolate as oatmeal is crazy. That, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, and that's why this is even more unhealthy than modern chocolatey <laughs> cereal because this is half chocolate, half oatmeal. Whereas this is far more diluted because we mix it up with the milk. Okay, so we're going to try <clears throat> this one now. Okay. I'll serve you up. I think this one's going to be a lot more tolerable. Yeah, well, I look think at that. so. That's not a taste. Here. A little more. Thank you. <laughs> trying to cheat me. I am not trying to cheat you. Bing. Bing. Okay, I can actually taste the oatmeal now. Right. <laughs> that is that a is, lot. That is better. That is a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that I made this version because I think the recipe is hinting that it wants this to be the final outcome. That's much better. This is like chocolate glue. That's good. Right. I mean, if you're obsessed with chocolate in a very unhealthy way and you only want to live to be, you know, 30, 35 years old, try this out. <laughs> What's my age? You just happened to say that when I was drinking this delicious cocoa. Well, if you eat this whole entire thing, I mean... Like, eh. Get it away, because you guys don't want to eat it. 
Mm. If it's in front of me, I'll eat it. Mm. You kidding. would not seriously eat all that. Would I? No, you would not. You, you hear that? No, you would not. I think they're saying do it. You would not. I, you, you really want me to do it? Okay, here we go. You're kidding me. This is for you guys. You're kidding me. Don't worry, I'll run some laps after this. Okay, go until you give up. <laughs> so, basically three bites later. Oh my gosh. No, I'm just kidding. I really shouldn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm not that crazy. How about you take one Hold more? You. Take one more bite since you teased everybody. Okay, I'll do that. That is mostly made up of this. Don't pour it on. I'll be careful. This gravy here. Yeah, there's no way I can do that. Right. I think uh, this is actually the way it was telling you to make it. I wish we had water today. <laughs> we don't have water. All, all we have is more chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. No. Oh, that's so good, but I hate it at the same time. <laughs> oh, no. It's horrible. I think Mishmish has left. If we're not here next week, it's because we died of diabetes. Yeah, it was nice knowing y'all. <laughs> really was. Speaking of dying, guess what happened to Justine? She got attacked by Colonel oh, Sanders man, yesterday. Oh man, my life flashed before my eyes. Colonel Sanders is turned into a bully, man. And I mean, he's really pushing it. I'm this close to chopping his head off with my tomahawk and throwing him in the cook pot. You know, I don't even blame you. They say it's not actually not a good idea to keep a very aggressive rooster because if you have chicks, it will teach the chicks to grow up to also be aggressive against humans. And I've even noticed that the hens have been more aggressive to us mm -hmm. in the last few months since right. we've gotten that rooster. He's teaching them really bad habits. So here's what happened yesterday. And to preface, Ron has been attacked by this rooster probably half a dozen yes. times now. I'm a victim. He's also attacked some of our family members. He's just attacked everybody, but he did not attack me. I thought I was untouchable. I thought I was Snow White and I was this majestic animal whisperer and he just didn't want to attack me because he liked me. False. Oh, so yeah. I, yesterday I was in the coop. I was fetching the eggs. Rooster comes up in there. He looks at me and I know instantly that I'm in trouble. I'm cornered in there. And this is a big old rooster. This isn't a tiny little breed. This thing's like this tall. He's a, a breeze. <clears throat> yeah, a French breed of chicken. Yeah. He's pretty big. I he's, mean, I'll, he's big. I'll give him credit. He's a very handsome bird. Yeah. But he's a... Uh, he's a bully. He's a bully. <laughs> and I watched the whole thing happen through the window. <laughs> I, was oh, standing, I was standing outside and all of a sudden, ah! And then I was looking at him, he's like... <laughs> yeah. And she's like, ah! That is exactly what happened. Okay, so this thing is coming towards me. I know it. Two seconds before the attack, I know it. My <laughs> eyes widen. Oh, he's coming towards me. And then, boom! He, like, jumps on me. He flies yeah, up he and up jumps. Like, he, he, me he meets me, like, here. It looked like a cockfight. Yeah, it really did. She and was in the cockpit in there and they were... I was cornered. I was against the wall inside the chicken coop with a handful of eggs and I grabbed the <laughs> stick off the ground. This It's a stick that we use to prop open the door so it don't close on the coop so the chickens can go in and out wherever they want. It's covered in chicken poop, but man, I saw my life flash before my eyes. So I grabbed that stick and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> You need your spoon. I know. I, I was defenseless without my spoon. This thing came at me three times. I was just laughing. I opened the door and said, get out of there. Well, you came to my rescue because I actually screamed. Show them what he did to you. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's it's also healed a lot since then. I, it broke the skin right over it here. It was much worse. It was much worse. And it doesn't show it well in this picture, but my whole hand was very red because he kept on flying and hitting my hand and he did break the skin in one spot and also on my ankle he kind of cut me up too but I started screaming and Ron came over and he told me and he opened up the door and he told me get out of here and he like distracted the rooster and I ran out of there and then we slammed the door and the rooster was stuck in there and we were just looking at him through the glass and and Ron said, I cannot believe you just attacked my beanie, because that's my nickname, the Steeny Beanie. Hearing this all over again really makes me want to go over there and get him right now. And... <laughs> yeah, he's he's a meanie. You know, and we've looked up so many different ways to tame a rooster. All of them are extremely frightening to me, 
because they require <laughs> me getting close get to that him. thing. If I get a hold of him, yeah. I'll kill him. Yeah, well, he's very mean. I just can't imagine grabbing him. And like, there's this method I read where you have to grab the rooster and pin it on the ground um, gently, nothing crazy, just like hold it on the ground for 10 seconds <coughs> to establish dominance. In their mind, that's their way of knowing, okay, I'm not the alpha, you're the alpha. The problem is this rooster is so psycho that even if you make eye contact with it, it will fly up at you and decapitate you. He needs to enter in those cockfights that they used to have. Jill used to have cockfighting here in America. It's been around since the beginning of time, and it was popular in uh, Europe by the 1500s, and even the founding fathers were uh, big-time cockfighters. Yeah, so there is a historical Washington, Franklin, connection there. Jefferson. Even in the uh, Andrew Jackson administration, they set up cockfighting rings in the Capitol. Inside the Capitol. The con Congress was having cockfights. Chickens are psycho. So, um, cockfighting was actually the second most popular sport in our time period, um, opposed to horse racing, which was the most popular uh, sport okay. as far as betting. So betting it sports. was the number two most popular gambling betting yeah, sport gambling, in gambling America sport, yeah. at one point. So that's that's pretty neat to to know that they wow. did that. I had no idea that they participated in that stuff. And wow. The first state that out it's outlawed now, but the first state to outlaw it was in 1836. That was Massachusetts, and then it wasn't until 2008 that Louisiana was the last state to wow. uh, outlaw it. And Missouri was the 1980s, right? Yeah, I think that Missouri was still having them up until the 1980s, and they uh, finally outlawed it. Right. So. I don't, we're not going to really do cockfighting or nothing. It's no, but he'd be a good candidate. But yeah. He'd, my, be a, he'd be a champion. My point is though that that rooster would be a champion. Oh yeah. And he wouldn't even need those, you know, fake talons they put on him. He's got his own. No. He's mean. He's deadly. He could, uh, you know, some people have been killed by roosters. Yeah. The, we told my uncle uh, what happened to Justine because he's the one that gave us the bird. And then he sent me this article. <laughs> from uh, from the news that was over in where it was like Indonesia or Philippines Somewhere or something. Somewhere like that, yeah. Uh, some second world country. Mm -hmm. And this guy got killed by one of them game birds, which is a, a rooster. cockfighting rooster. Yeah. And he bled out. And the daughter came home and found her dad in the kitchen at a puddle of blood. And his last words apparently were, And he died. And then he died. And I was like, wow, Uncle Randy, thanks for sharing that with us. Can we uh, trade our chicken in for another one? Yeah, thanks, <laughs> we Uncle wanna, Randy, we for telling refund. me this. We want to refund. Take him back. <laughs> so apparently if they get you at the right spot and they go deep enough, they could actually cut an artery. Yeah. Yeah, so a couple different people I looked up have died by being killed by roosters. What a way to go, man. I know, you live your You're whole life. You're no longer life. allowed to go in the chicken coop for your own safety. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> After that experience, I'm okay with that. Well, hey, let's bounce back the chocolate real quick. Okay. What would you rate this? One out of ten. Okay, so this one, which yes. I do think is the way that the receipt wanted it to be. Um, I would give this a seven out of ten. It's very rich and sweet. It's just not for everybody. Right. You know, I prefer my oatmeal plain, just with some milk and that's it. But I would give it a seven out of ten. I wouldn't eat that every day. Like you, I like mine semi plain. I like mm. butter and cinnamon in mine, right. and maybe some honey. Right. But so I, we're a little biased. I, I would give that a, I'd say six, six and a half. That is respectable. Yeah. Now, what would you give? That one. Yes. <laughs> that one don't deserve one. That don't even deserve a rating. <laughs> it's deadly. It's deadly. Nobody would yeah. be able to enjoy a full meal of that. You would just it's, be miserable. It's like survival food. If I was trying to just. <laughs> eat 5,000 calories a day to survive, I would consider this as a great option. <laughs> hey, you know, in our time period, the chocolate press was invented. Really? Yeah. It what is a chocolate press? It was invented over in Europe in 1828 by a man named Van hmm. Houten and his father, Van Houten Sr. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense, don't it? <laughs> Van Houten Sr. started a chocolate hmm. mill uh, facility in, eight, in 1815 and then uh, about a decade and some odd years later, they invented the first hydraulic chocolate press, which takes the, oh. the apparently the giant 
cocoa bean mm -hmm. <laughs> and and squeezes, squeezes it and squeezes it instead of having to sit there and, and do the, uh, the motion yeah. by hand yeah because it, it does the work for you so it's more right. efficient and it's better at it and it's faster yeah because back then you would have had to do it by hand yes and that was in 1828 so that that's mm -hmm. pretty neat that uh, an invention like that happened in our time period and that oh. was over in uh i believe that was uh, Amsterdam was where that was located. Oh, yeah. Amsterdam. Yep. That is pretty Over there neat. in Germany. Yeah. So there you go. Chocolate already had a very well established trade route if yep. it was being served. I know in Paris it was very popular. In London it was super popular. And apparently also in Amsterdam. So these trade routes were super well established by the early 1800s. <laughs> Same goes with fruit. People ask me all the time, how do you <laughs> live in Missouri and in 1820 would have gotten a lemon? It makes no sense. We live in 2023 and we still have lemons in the store and they don't grow lemons in Missouri. So <laughs> right. it don't matter if it's 2023 or 1820, it's the same. They're grown in the south and shipping. they're shipped to where they uh, need to go. <laughs> shipping. Is it a, are you a barge? Yeah, I guess so. I guess they didn't have horns back then. Ding ding! Right, ding, ding. right. They shipped yeah. it on a they boat. They shipped it. Yeah, it was shipped up there. <laughs> And, you know, the, a lot of these recipes that I cook from, not all of them, some are actually published in America, but some are published in England because yeah. that's just the nature of cookbooks at this time period, unfortunately. There wasn't really too much going on in America yet, um, but there was a lot going on in England. So a lot of these cookbooks that call for lemons are published in England. How in the world would they get lemons in England? Oh, oh I know, I know, pick okay, me. Okay, tell me. Uh, was it a boat? Yeah. It come, it, it, yeah, it, it, came arrived, on a, it, it arrived on a boat. <laughs> they shipped it. How do you get lemons in England in 2023? Came on a boat. <laughs> there you go. It's the same. It, it probably hasn't did. changed. It probably did. It probably right. came up so far on a boat and then it was Maybe. at a warehouse and then went to a, a semi truck yeah, and then went to your exactly. grocery store. Yeah. Well, it was the same back then, you know, to some extent. It would come up on a boat and then, then they'd a have a, a big wagon yeah. would take it, you know, so. Yeah, a, By, freight, a freight wagon. Yeah. A freight train. So, a freight hauling truck. It's, yeah. it's freight. The word freight is yeah. cargo. It hauls yeah. stuff. So the point being that there were very well-established trade routes by the early 1800s yes. for all sorts of things, including chocolate. Well, I got one more fun fact about chocolate. Go for it. Did you know that <laughs> in the Revolutionary War, um, the officers were assigned to have a ration of... Our window's open, sorry. To, oh, my candle went out. Oh well. Oh, it's scary now. <laughs> it's so Anyways. dark in here. Ron, Ron, where are you, sweetie? Open your eyes, woman. I'm right here. Oh, hey, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the the officers, particularly the colonels, were rationed four pounds of chocolate a month in the Revolutionary War, and during the Civil War, uh, chocolate was given to injured soldiers to raise their morale and to make them calm and feel happy. I'm telling you, people were more obsessed with chocolate back then than they are now. Here, have some chocolate. I know you're yeah. missing half a leg and that just got bayoneted in the gut. It'll make you feel better. You know what? But I do know that in the MREs, even in World War II, they would give chocolate. Yes, I did see something about World yeah. War II when I was doing some research. Right. I just but, figured it was a given, so I didn't... Right, but they wouldn't give pounds upon pounds like they did in the Red War. Well, I'm sure the men over in Iraq and Afghanistan had, like, Hershey Kisses or something in their pocket. Oh, yeah. Well, in, that, in <laughs> modern times, you can get whatever you want, wherever you want, you know? Yeah. But it's not really rationed. <laughs> right, right. Well, hey, let's go over some of these. What happened this week in history now? We weren't here last week, so right. we got a long list because there were some really cool ones last week that I right. need to tell you guys right. about. First off, it was George Washington's birthday last week. Sorry, Mr. Birthday George. Yes, we're really sorry. I was thinking about you, though. The man I never met. <laughs> and what? it reminds me, we met, we had a video once where we found out that Ron has an ancestor whose name was George Washington Rayfield. Yeah, that's right. Because his last name is Rayfield. So we said that his, he's related to George Washington. So he, it's George Rayfield. Washington Rayfield. What and, a name. Hm. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool, though. To, to know that your family comes from a patriotic past. That's I, I true. like that. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, it was George Washington's birthday. That's a biggie. The next uh, big one from last week was in 1751, on February 25th, the first performing monkey in the New World opened up, the exhibit. For it opened this up. is the most important fact you'll ever hear in your life. Any guess what city that was? <laughs> the first performing monkey in America. What city? 1751, you said? Yes, yeah, 1751. 
Well, it was probably a, a well built up city, if I had to guess. Yes. Mm, Boston? You're close. What's the other big one? New York? Yes. Oh. New York City, mm -hmm. and it cost one cent for the admission. <laughs> so they had chocolate back then, and they had dancing monkeys back then. <laughs> and they had okay. dancing monkeys. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, so mm -hmm. I have one more from last week, and this one was really cool. I really wanted to share this last week, but we were just too sick. When Ron told me this, it completely blew my mind. This, yeah, this is crazy. Anyways, right. <laughs> this man's birthday was last week. His mm -hmm. name is Nicholas Cannot. He was born on February 26, 1725, and... Any guesses what he invented or what he's known for? Now, he wasn't an American. No, he was not an American. But we just have to talk about this right. because it's mind-blowing. He was French. Yeah. You want to tell him what he invented? He invented an automobile? That's right. In the, in the 18th century? In, the, in 1770, he invented what they call the Fau de Ave Pouf. How very The correct. steam truck. I cannot wrap my mind around this. Now look at this thing. It's going down the road. It's smoking. It's a steam engine. This it's... is the most steampunk thing I've ever seen. Now, it only runs for about 15 minutes or the distance <laughs> of 100 yards until it runs out of steam and you got to refill the water tanks. But how cool is this? Oh, this is incredible. And okay, I know you're wondering out there, okay, how come this didn't go anywhere? How come when I think of automobiles, I think of the early 20th century? Right. Um, well, there's a reason for it. His timing was horrible. Right idea, wrong time. Right. Wrong place, too. Right. French Revolution. Yes. He brought this thing out um, shortly before the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. He was still perfecting it, and then the French Revolution happened. Now, he had some relations to nobility, um, and also he was friends with them. And he was funded by the state, so he yes. was kind of a, a, he, an uppity insider. He was on the hit list for the French Revolution. If you know anything about that, um, the Great Terror, they were going around chopping everyone's head off that was rich. <laughs> yeah. Um, they were blaming rich people for all the country's problems, so he had to get out of there. Yeah, he fled to Brussels for mm -hmm. a few years, and then Napoleon wanted him and his machine, the the far dr for po can't pronounce it. The thing. They want the steam <laughs> truck. They want him and his big automobile to haul the artillery, haul the artillery around. So he cut a deal with them, and he came back to France. And after the revolution, um, Napoleon re restored his um, his name, I guess you would yep. say, and gave him a, a pension. A pension to continue his research. Right, and unfortunately, he died. And then in he died. But because too much time had passed, now he was old, an older man, and right. he died. And then he was dead, and I guess nobody really went with it until, mm -hmm. or they, I guess they went towards the steam, towards the train more than they did the car. Yeah. But they were so close in 1770 with this thing right. to be in a car. Right. I'm amazed that it went 15 <laughs> minutes. So the reason Napoleon was excited about this idea and gave the inventor a pension is because he wanted something that could carry his heavy cannons mm -hmm. across fields. These solid iron cannons weigh oh, yeah. thousands of pounds. They're huge. Horses have a hard time with it, ox have a hard time with it, and you know men have a hard time with it. So he, he saw potential in this idea. But unfortunately, the inventor died. And I guess he just either didn't have an apprentice that had the guts yeah. to carry it on or the knowledge or what now this is in a museum in paris today and there's also uh, a few replicas around the the one in the video was actually from florida it has florida plates on yeah it. <laughs> it's a replica of the one in paris so it's, it's just really neat but hey very neat for this week's uh this week in history on february 27th 1827 the first mardi gras happens in new orleans oh that's mm. neat that is neat that is pretty neat now, that's not the mm. first Mardi Gras in the New World. The first Mardi Gras in the New World happened about 20 years before mm. up in Mobile, Alabama. In, oh. in like 1702, mm. I believe. But uh, mm. the first one in New Orleans, which is, you know, what everybody knows today. It's the cliche, and it's New Orleans has definitely built up yes. Mardi Gras in a way that nowhere else has. Now, the, first, the very first one didn't happen mm. in New Orleans because New Orleans didn't exist until 1718. Want to help me read the rest of these? He's got mishmash. <laughs> yep, there he is. All right, so in 1692, on February 29th, the first witch, 
uh, accusations in Salem occur. Oh. Yeah. Fun times. No. You're a witch! Get away! Is this Stay news back. to you? Ah! There's a black cat too. It's, it's <laughs> all around me. Help me! Help me! Help me! All right. <laughs> and then my last one I've got for this week is uh, all the way in 1872. Wow. Um, on March 1st, Yellowstone becomes the first national park. That's pretty oh, cool. in America. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is very yeah. Those are some neat facts, especially that super steampunk looking automobile. <laughs> and it and was, a dancing monkey. And a dancing monkey. <laughs> I, it doesn't say what kind of monkey it was, so I don't know if it was a little tiny thing yeah, I'm or not a sure. chimpanzee. I, I tried looking and I couldn't find the show mm -hmm. bill and I couldn't find what kind of monkey it was, you know, any descriptions on it. I just found the headline huh. uh, that said that. But I, I do have one more tidbit. Because some people were going to say, well, last week wasn't George Washington's birthday, February 11th was. Oh, well, yeah. according to the <laughs> Julian calendar, which is made in 46 BC by Julius Caesar, hmm. uh, February 11th was George Washington's birthday. But according to the Gregorian calendar, uh, it was brought forth. Georgian. And, no, no, it's, Gregor Gregor it's Gregorian. Oh. Yep, Pope Gregorian the 13th in the <laughs> 1580s uh, came up with the Gregorian calendar, which is what we use today. And at... Uh, <clears throat> one second. And in the late 1500s, uh, Spain, France, and a few other countries adopted it, but Great Britain did not adopt the Gregorian calendar until the mid 18th century, until the 1750s. So that puts George Washington's birthday at uh, February 22nd. So oh. that's that's why there's that confusion there. There were 11 days uh, off because Caesar miscalculated and. Mm. They said if we would have stuck with that, by the time we get to the year 2100, we would be about 13 or 14 days off. Wow. It's crazy that they even caught that mathematical mistake, but it's so marginal over that large amount of time right. from BC to 1580. Right. Who's got time to do that kind of math? <laughs> so it was off by a little bit. It's a little wonky, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why hmm. Great Britain wanted to be the the lone wolf and using the old style calendar it mm. doesn't make any sense whenever mm. all the other people around them france and spain were using mm. the gregorian calendar because you would think it'd get real confusing when you're writing documents and hey, shipping hey. things like omi all these animals are attacking ah, us the, the chocolate's made him mean man they're revolting <laughs> leave me alone get down here you can go over he here he only i i only think he had the tiniest tiniest little bit no he's going crazy man here come mish, on. Mish. Come on. there you go Rabbit, cat. If he, if he comes back, he can come to me. You know what? You talked about witches, and that made him angry. Woo! Man, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for watching. We really whoa, appreciate whoa, whoa, it. Whoa, 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 yeah, two things to say. Oh, okay. Say it. <laughs> All right, so we have two events coming up. Uh, oh, yeah. The first event that's coming up is the St. Jim Militia Encampment. <laughs> if you'd like to see how uh, a militia drills and sets up camp and all that fun stuff, mm. March 25th here in St. Genevieve. Now, it's not going to be on the town's roster. There's a few of, the, few of you have asked us, well, I don't see it on the town's um, list of events. The town doesn't care what we do. Do not look at yeah. the St. Genevieve Go website. Go by what we say. We have nothing to do with that website. We yes. cannot control now, that website. I promise you, March 25th, mm -hmm. there will be men set up at the <laughs> Center for French Colonial Life. <laughs> in the yard and one or two women including yes. myself <laughs> yes so don't listen to the uh, saintgen.com yeah. yeah we uh, they don't talk to us yeah they, and every time we've tried talking to them they just ignore us now we'll, we'll send a flyer to them say mm -hmm. we please share this sometimes they answer back sometimes they don't they have not answered back apparently right and our next event coming up after that is in may on may 6th and 7th it is also another free event and it is called Pioneer Days, and it's going to be at Sassafras Creek in St. Genevieve. And that is our event. And that's going to be awesome. We got gunsmith, we got blacksmith, we got Peter Smith, we got basket weaving, we got some wool spinning, we got pottery. paper modeling, we got pottery, we got laundry uh, washing, laundry washing, we got candle, candle dip dipping, yeah. we've got so, woodwork, we've got what is the other one? Uh, we have military a drilling from both 1812 and. The Continental Army unit is going to be there, so that is going to be really awesome. Yeah, and, and we're going to have a cart yeah, pulled we're, by a mule. We have mule pulled wagon or wagon mule. I'm just saying horse-drawn carriage, but it ain't horses. No, it's we're, mules. We're having mule pulled wagon rides. 
that are actually free. For free. The upon, whole, upon the whole, donation. Yeah, the whole event is free. The yep. whole thing is free. Whole There's is no free. parking fee or anything. Just come mm. on by. And uh, last year, it's two days. It's Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Last year, we had about a thousand people that showed up between the two days. Um, you can come by yourself. You can come with your children. It's an all ages friendly event. Yes. And we will be there. We will be uh, demonstrating. I think I'm going to be the washerwoman this year. And Bron's going to be kind of a floater, just going around everywhere. I'll probably be supervising and make sure everybody's mm -hmm. good, got water, everything's running smooth. Uh, me, and, me and Candy are kind of the, the main organizers mm -hmm. of the show. Justine is also one of them, but we're going to let her have some fun and, and get to demonstrate and mingle with the people while we yeah. kind of run the show. Because yeah. some, somebody has to be referee, you know. And Candy's store will be open yes. on and, Saturday and Sunday. And there will be other uh, sutlers there as well. There that, will be that's, food. That's somebody that sells trinkets and doodads mm -hmm. and whatnot, so very rare items that you might not find at other places, so... Food and drink. And this be a cash event, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll always... Unless you're buying something from Candy's store. Right, but anytime mm -hmm. you come to an event like this, please bring cash. Right, because and... uh, we don't have card readers yeah, out there. Yeah, it's just easier. <laughs> but, right. But hey, Let's hop off here. Um, I'm gonna go take me a nap because my belly's starting to hurt from <laughs> all this chocolate. And you didn't even eat that much. I think the viewers are very disappointed. I, I can't do it. I'm sorry guys, I can't do it. You know what, we're here to review these 200 year old dishes, not to kill ourselves. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm really glad we got to have a chew chat yes. with you all this yes. week. Take care, we'll see you next time. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.